Hello, this is Ray Marquis, Senior Application Engineer with Valen Corporation. And this video is going to show the details of using the servo press in the first of the position press modes, which is speed control keeping position. I want to talk about the different servo press press motion modes. There's a table right out of the manual that I'm showing here, and you can see there are nine modes. There are four speed control and five force control. And then inside each speed control, there's position, stop, distance, stop, load, stop, and incremental stop. It's important to look at this part first because when we go back to the software and we look at these modes, they have a slightly different name. Speed control, keeping position, uh, keeping distance, keeping load, holding incremental load. So basically when you see keeping or holding in the software, that means stopping at, just like it shows in the manual here. The other thing I want to point out is that in the speed control, there's this position stop, distance stop, load stop, and incremental stop. And there are those same four modes in the force control. We'll forget about mode number nine for now, but I'm probably only going to do the videos for the first four modes in speed control because the only difference is that in speed control, the speed is held consistent while it finds its position or it finds its distance in this case, or it finds the load or it finds the incremental load. Uh, in force control, the speed is not held consistent, so it will slow down or speed up based on the resistance uh, of the load that you're pushing against, but it'll still stop at the position. So if I do a speed control position stop or a force control position stop, both of those modes are going to have the actuator move to a, the target position before it stops. So these modes are kind of duplicated. In previous videos, we showed an introduction to the software and another video explains each of the program motion steps. In this video, I'm going to focus on the speed control keeping position. So this program is designed to go to a position while looking for a, a load. So if we exceed this load before we get to this position, then that's going to signal an alarm. If we don't make it to position, that'll signal an alarm. And I've defined my approach motion search motion, press motion, depress motion in return in here, plus my judgment settings. I'm going to run this program by clicking on the operation monitor, answering yes to the silly question. Now, a lot of people have problems here because they just try to run, but I've got to actually select the program. The program that we're going to use is program 23. So in this start program here, I'll go down to 23. Everything's set. The servo's on, the actuator's homed. If they weren't, I would do that first before trying to run any programs. I'm gonna hit the program start and we'll watch the data down here. It's looking for that position. It found it, it's at 60 and the current load is about 33 Newtons. Let's run it one more time. It's pressing 60 and about 33 Newtons is our feedback force. So over in my program here, I said the maximum load is 60 Newtons, but that's going to be a lot if I only really need 30. So let's lower that down to something like uh, 40. And you'll see why in a minute. We'll just run it again to make sure it works. Okay, that's all working pretty good. It's gonna return here. So now here's a video showing that. Next, let's see what happens if we have a problem. This problem that I'm gonna show you is maybe a misplaced part or an extra part. What will happen is we're gonna to try to make it to that 60 millimeters, which we will, but there will be too much load coming back because we've depressed our spring too much. And that'll look like this. So we exceeded that, that load that we set in the program of 30 Newton or 40 Newtons. And so we got a maximum press overload. So the program stopped and the actuator just returned right away. So here's a video showing that failure. If I discovered while I'm using this particular mode 
that I need to change the end position in order to get a part to fit together better. All I need to do is just change this end position. So I could say I want to go to 65 millimeters instead of 60. But I want to pay attention to this maximum load here to make sure that I don't go over that maximum load at 65. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, the first one is that I can go back here, change to the trial operation, select the jog speed, or better way to do it is since I want to go to 65 millimeters and I want to make sure that I don't exceed the, the limit, I'll go here and say 65 millimeters is my target. Then press the start button. The actuator will move to 65 millimeters and I can see that my load is 46.2. I'm going to send it back up to the top so that we're ready to start the program. And remember that 46.2 number. So I'm going to need to increase this maximum load if I want to press to 65 millimeters. So I'll change this to 50. I also want to pay attention to my judgment parameters up here to make sure I'm within this window for the position and the force feedback or the load, which I am. I've got some pretty wide so that I can do this. Next, I'll save this. I'll go back to the program operation here and I'm going to run by clicking program operation tab. I'll run program 23 again. And you can see that the position went down to 65 millimeters and we didn't fault out. Everything's good. Now it's going back up and that's all good. Here's a video that shows that one. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, you can have them answered by using the information on the screen. Look for other videos that show more information about using the Intelligent Actuator Servo Press coming soon.